Shigur picked up the signal from the transponder coming across the high span of the Devil's River Bridge, just west of Del Rio. It was near midnight and no cars on the highway. He reached over into the passenger seat and turned the dial slowly forward and then back, listening. Shigur drove slowly along the row of motel rooms with the window down and the receiver in his lap. He turned at the end of the lot and came back. He slowed to a stop and put the ram charger in reverse and backed slightly down the black top and stopped again. Finally, he drove around to the office and parked and went in. The clock on the motel office wall said 12.42. The television set was on, and the woman looked like she'd been asleep. Yes, sir, she said. Can I help you? He left the office with the key in his shirt pocket and got into the Ram Charger and drove around to the side of the building and parked and got out and walked down to the room, carrying the bag with the receiver and the guns in it. In the room... He dropped the bag onto the bed and pulled off his boots and came back out with the receiver and the battery pack and the shotgun from the truck. The shotgun was a 12-gauge Remington automatic with a plastic military stock and a parkerized finish. It was fitted with a shop-made silencer fully a foot long and big around as a beer can. He came back to the room and stood in the open door under the dead white light from the parking lot lamp. He walked into the bathroom and turned the light on there. He took the measure of the room and looked to see where everything was. He measured where the light switches were. Then he stood in the room, taking it all in once again. He sat and got the air tank and slung it across his shoulder and caught up the cattle gun where it swung from the rubber air hose and walked out and down to the room. He stood listening at the door. Then... He punched out the lock cylinder with the air gun and kicked open the door. A Mexican in a green guayabera had sat up on the bed and was reaching for a small machine gun beside him. Sugar shot him three times so fast it sounded like one long gunshot and left most of the upper part of him spread across the headboard and the wall behind it. The shotgun made a strange deep chugging sound like someone coughing into a barrel. He snapped on the light and stepped out of the doorway and stood with his back to the outside wall. He looked in again, quickly. The bathroom door had been shut. Now it was open. He stepped into the room and fired two loads through the standing door and another through the wall and stepped out again. Down toward the end of the building, a light had come on. The man was lying, slumped against the tub, holding an AK-47. He was shot in the chest and the neck, and he was bleeding heavily. No me mate, he wheezed. No me mate. Shigura stepped back to avoid the spray of ceramic chips off the tub and shot him in the face. He looked in the closet, and he looked under the bed, and he pulled all the drawers out onto the floor. He wiped his feet back and forth on the carpet to get the blood off the soles of his boots, and he stood looking at the room. Then his eye fell on the air duct. He took the lamp from beside the bed and jerked the cord free and climbed up on the dresser and stove in the grate with a metal lamp base and pulled it loose and looked in. He could see the drag marks in the dust. He climbed down and stood there. He wiped his boot soles on the carpet again and looked around the room a last time and left. <laughs>